Hey, this is Drodio, and we're just doing a founder lunch. So here's Erica, and here's Jing, and this is a founder learning session. So I was out for a week, and a lot happened in a week. So Jing is going to bring us and you up to speed in a five-ish minute update. So go ahead. Yeah. So in the past few weeks, it has been incredible for the AI and the AIGC industry. So this was definitely in a rapid change and adapting gold rush period. Um, so let me give you a high level overview of what has been released in just a few weeks. <laughs> Imagine normally they take decades of progress happening in a week, a few weeks. Yeah. So give you the, the context on that, I just want to tell a little bit of the ecosystem of the industry now. So this is a very good article by A16Z describing the AIGC platform. So on the bottom we have Hardwell, and NVIDIA, and Cloud, GCP, and MS. On top of them, we have companies that are providing closed source foundation models like OpenAI. And they also got companies uh, providing open source models like Stability, Cognitive Face, like also some of the operating model hubs, Cognitive Face is doing that. And also GitHub is entering the on that. And also on top of that, there's also some companies who are leveraging this capability to build application. And literally, there's an update for every day <laughs> for this ecosystem. Um, and so let me go through one by one what has changed in each part of the system. For the cloud platform, we have, may have heard of like the war between the Azure and Google. So our starting from the foundation model mm -hmm. pieces. In the open source foundation, uh, so there's very big improvements uh, in the past months is that is the uh, Llama models. Uh, so previously, uh, the closed source model has been way much better than open source models. Mm -hmm. And we all predict that open source model is going to catch up, mm -hmm. which slowly happened. Mm -hmm. But in the past few weeks, this has been accelerating. Mm -hmm. So the Llama model is a model released by the Meta. And you might realize the Meta is not like winning in the whole system game, so they decided to go more like open source mm -hmm. approaches. Mm -hmm. But they have very strong AI foundations, mm -hmm. so they released these Llama models. And by the way, if you have questions about... Uh, I know, I, I was noticing you're running the, uh, the Storytold Chrome extension here, so we yeah. can see here there's a summary of what the article was about. You see, like, if you like, have a question and you want to update about what is AI, the easiest way to do is use Storytel. Over the anywhere pages, <laughs> ask a question, for example, ask what is Nama? I don't yeah. know. I assume I don't know yeah. what is Nama. Actually, gave a very pretty good, good answer on that. And Jing, one quick thing about this. I was listening to the Hard Fork podcast, which is excellent. I know that Eric and I both love that podcast. And one of the things they were mentioning on that Hard Fork podcast was that Llama can really run on one, like right. on a laptop. It's a really right. small model. Maybe there's something yeah. there to mention about and it. And that lots yeah. of people got access to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really good quote, is that one differentiation of these. So there's a lot of companies who have been trying to go for source models. Llama, first of all, is the one that has a reasonable performance. Still not as good, but it's quite reasonable. Mm -hmm. You can use that to do a quite uh, reasonable things like it's catching up with GPT-3 mm -hmm. in these cases. And also, most importantly, uh, the Meta has done a lot of memory optimization mm -hmm. to the point that it can run in a much smaller machine. So like you call, it can run in the Mac. So yeah. that's a big, big thing. Yeah, cool, uh, okay. Yeah. And also, just like the relationship between the GPT models versus chat GPT, which requires some kind of fine tuning to improve the performance, immediately after Meta released Alpha, uh, Llama, by the way, they, they all get the links of that category of uh, animals. <laughs> yeah, they got a um, Stanford study uses some data set to try to find you. So imagine this is kind of chat GPT on top of, uh, on top of like, you can also ask, what is Alpha Cup? Yeah. So imagine that is, uh, imagine that this is like GPT-3 to chat GPT, that happens in OpenAI about two years. This now happens in a week. Wow, wow. two years to a week. To a Amazing. week. Yep. Like Stanford taking that work to get Alpaca. So, which means that there's a lot of things that is happening here. Yeah. 
and the open source foundation models like Llama, Apaka, a lot of like derivative models. And of course, now still caveat here is that a lot of these models may have a strict uh, open source license. So mm -hmm. there's something that we need to think about, but a great improvement. And we mm -hmm. can see this, we will uh, accelerate. So just, just to summarize here, there's been a ton of energy here in the closed source foundational models, especially around OpenAI. And what you're sharing right now, Jing, is that on this open source side, now we're starting to see like Meta, because Meta hasn't been playing well here, they're starting to really compete in this open source side. And then Stanford was able to build on that effectively. Right, 100%. Yeah, got yeah, it. Exactly. Okay, cool. Yeah. And that's not the only update. <laughs> okay, what else you got? <laughs> yeah. So the closed source side, people are also very, very busy. Yeah. So for example, the OpenAI side, um, OpenAI has released GPT-4. Of yeah. course, that is incredible um, model that has more uh, capability. Mm -hmm. And it's just a week after that, they also released another very powerful thing, mm -hmm. the, GP, uh, the chat GPT plugin. Uh -huh. Why this matters? Um, the the GPT any type of GPT models only remember the things in the training data, mm -hmm. which is a cut the cut off date of uh, like 2020, 2021. Right, so it's pretty yeah. stale. Yeah. <laughs> and this plugin system allows developers to combining the GPT models with some third party real time sources that to to kind of augment. It's kind of the original iPhone that only kind of something, but not perfect on many things. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So this will allow the third-party developer uh, applications to get real-time data to augment mm -hmm. the GPT. And people, many people call this is the moment of the birth of App Store. Yeah. yeah. Can I just it's summarize? App Store. Birth of the App Store. Store. Yeah, right. So not only has there been a lot of activity here that we just talked about, but also here. So for example, there's GPT-3, but OpenAI re released GPT-4. And then there's an application layer on top of that, things like ChatGPT. But not only is there an application layer, I don't think it's showing here, but there's also like a plugin ecosystem that's getting bolted into this application layer and really expanding its utility. Is that accurate? Is that accurate to think accurate. about it? Yeah, so the OpenAI, like and side is definitely double down on that, and of course the similar side has also a uh, open source library like Longchamp that was trying to do the similar ecosystem thing, but more in the open source side. Mm. It's happening on both sides. So that is kind of the foundational moment layer side, and there's more. <laughs> <laughs> you can't imagine it's just two or three weeks, right? Yeah. Uh, and in the application layer, there's also a lot of um, uh, new interesting applications coming. Mm -hmm. For example, you might heard about Microsoft Copilot mm -hmm. 365. That well, uh, that is in the application layer. Microsoft released their applications integrating with ChatGPT with mm -hmm. their Office as a productivity uh, improvement. And so a way to think about that is in this application layer, if we all remember Clippy from 20 years ago, the little paper clip that would jump around and try to help. This is a reimagining of Clippy where Copilot is being integrated into the Microsoft Office suite in a way that can really be helpful. Is that 100%, accurate? 100%, yep. yeah. And of course, Microsoft is Gorilla, so that attracts a lot of attention here. Mm -hmm. And now it's more <laughs> but uh, like in the application layers there's also uh, a very important thing is the github copilot x which is uh, automatic generating code that's mm -hmm. a vertical application starting to show up here i think you do have these pages open to just show them really quickly right. let's take a look at them as you're talking about them here okay yeah. so here's github copilot x yep yeah one is the code uh Pilot X. Yeah, so GitHub ah. Copilot X here, so it's just probably a pinch here. Um, and it's basically a way that in the vertical of uh, improving the productivity of programmers. So yeah. some of the vertical applications people are starting to pay attention to, mm -hmm. like programming is one of them. Uh, and of course, GitHub is very important, um, and people are very amazed by GitHub uh, Copilot X. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you also show? You talked about the plugin library. I think is that. Do you have that one 
Is that is that this one here? Uh, so this is uh, this one, right? Right, 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 right. Yeah. Yeah, and also another thing I want to share about parking that as you can see, like this app store, when the time they born, like you see all these top vendors, they just jump in day one. Yeah. So, um, <coughs> we all know app store is not easy to kick off. But OpenEye definitely has the momentum for that. Yeah. All the like basically top ten websites they already started working on the chat GPT plugin. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, one interesting thing that I heard about the way to think about this this plugin framework for chat GPT, there was a, a, a great article about how chat GPT gets a computer. And the idea being that like chat GPT being a you know deep learning kind of like throw all the data in a large language model but it isn't great at math. Like it can't do complex right. math well, but something like Wolfram Alpha can do complex math really well. It's meant to be the simplest kind of version. Right. And so by, by, by putting these plugins into an ecosystem, now you've got both. You've got like the large language model that can do like inferences kind of like a human right. does and get accurate, but not exact, yeah. plugged into something like Wolfram Alpha, which is very exact. Yes, that's a very, very great point. And also another, um, reason why people are so uh, passionate about it is um, the capability of defining workflow in a very soft way. So previously imagine that if you want to define a Zapier type of workflow, it's very frigid. You have to set up a way that input output exactly has to be the mm -hmm. same. And that's a common problem of like the software defined workflow. But the uh, what ChatGPT provides is kind of a natural language layers that standardize the interfaces between mm -hmm. different mm -hmm. applications. And even if you talk with this, you know, the input is a little bit wrong, the chat GPT can understand it can still infer the right mm -hmm. action to take. Like for like, I think an example of what you're talking about is like, I'm gonna be able to use these plugins to be like, hey, book me a flight for next week. And when I land at my Airbnb, make sure that there are, there are groceries waiting for me. And I'm using the Kayak and the Instacart plugins, and I'm just kind of like defining that almost like a declarative model, like the end state that I want. Yeah. And then the system is able to use these plugins to make it happen. Is that right, accurate? Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah cool. Okay. Yeah. What else? Anything else to share? And <laughs> nothing else more <laughs> is that uh, back to the topic that like we're going to the bottom to also the vertical, like, well, the vertical is uh, the programming, but also there are more verticals coming. For example, Bloomberg GPT, which is also a very big thing coming from the past two weeks, is that uh, it's a vertical application for financial industry. Uh -huh. uh, so the trend of vertical applications of chat GPT yeah. is definitely the way it's coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. I've got yeah. a, a question, which yeah. is around the, the letter that lots of AI researchers and mm -hmm. thinkers signed about things mm -hmm. are moving too fast. Yeah, right slow down? That's a very great question. Um, and as a quick recap for, for people who are watching this is that we are in an incredible moment with so many updates. This normally happens in a decade of work progress. It happens in two weeks. Mm -hmm. And um, we don't know exactly what happened two weeks from now or mm -hmm. months from right. now. It's probably not slowing down. It's, not, it's probably not going to slow down. My, like, with foul feelings that it's captured it's accelerating, keep accelerating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, we are not very really sure that what the end capability of the AI will be. So a lot of uh, like even famous entrepreneurs, prominent scientists are very worried about what we're heading to. Are we going to have a AI overlord that's going mm -hmm. to automate all the job we're doing? So they propose that we pause the uh, research of any large language model that's more powerful, GPT-4, essentially part of GPT-5 work for mm -hmm. half a year before they can set up a comedy which is for providing the kind of industrial regulation guidance about how to develop AI in a more responsible way. So there's a lot of people signed on that letter and this has been, uh, there has been a lot of debates uh, mm -hmm. in the past few weeks. For that mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. thanks for pointing that out. So that's another big movement that happened. Mm -hmm. Do you have a position a position on that? Anything from like your perspective? So my perspective is that it's very, very important uh, for us to set up a guideline. 
about how to develop AI in a very responsible way. Right now, it definitely feels like we are very much in a gold rush. Mm -hmm. Everyone is so rushed to get everything. And when we develop this AI technology, um, they, like great capability comes with great responsibility. Mm -hmm. In particularly, when we use that to generate so many new contents that AIGC will come in, mm -hmm. how do we handle like the misinformation, how mm -hmm. do we handle the, the, the drowning of information, information overflow. Mm -hmm. We don't really have a way to both make it responsible usable and also distill signal from noise mm -hmm. from, from that. It's, it's a critical, critical uh, field for us to do. And so my take is that um, we definitely need to, the, the whole industry need to have spend time. Don't just like go rush, but also think about how do we do this in a way that is responsible, that is really helpful for humanity, rather than spreading all the misinformation or taking all our jobs away. How do you create this powerful technology in a way that really benefits mm -hmm. humans? That's worth the considerations, mm -hmm. and uh, we need to I, like, in principle, I'm, I'm agreed with the, the framework is that we cannot be just to go rush. Mm -hmm. We have to also set up standards. Mm -hmm. How do we respect privacy? How do we reduce information, uh, like both the misinformation mm -hmm. and also the information overflow that will come from this? And without spending time on that and just focus on new world, new models, we might get us into a bad spot mm -hmm. and might also get the industry into a bad spot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because if you just go do the gold rush, at the end of the day, you might trigger a lot of government regulation because mm -hmm. when you have a lactive impact on society, mm -hmm. if the industry does not self-regulate, mm -hmm. some external entity will regulate for you. So I think that's a wise decision to be more strategic rather mm -hmm. than just in kind of go to rush mode. Okay. Well, yeah. Thank you for that update. Our four minute update has turned into a 17 minute update. <laughs> so this is going to be a long YouTube video. If only there was a way to summarize this YouTube video <laughs> to understand what the signal was from this video. So I think the market isn't the only place that's been innovating. Do either of you know a website that I could go to to summarize a YouTube video? And could you, do you have anything you could put on the screen that I might be able to use to be able to summarize a YouTube Please video? check out us at app.storytile.ai, storytile.ai. And we open this, just put the YouTube link here and click here and you will get a summary okay. and you will be able to get a signal out of the noise. <laughs> awesome, I'll do it for this video. Thank you, Jing. Really appreciate the update. All right, ciao. <laughs>